This is the highest viewpoint in Penang. Penang is famous for its unique street art. Welcome to Penang, an island state on the northwest coast of Malaysia. Penang is one of the most visited states in the country and is often referred to as the Pearl of the Orient. Penang offers a blend of Eastern and Western influences alongside a unique mix of history and modernity. Penang is not just a tropical paradise. Beyond its stunning landscapes and pictures, beaches, it's heaven for food lovers. If you are visiting Penang for the first time, it's better to stay in Georgetown, Penang's capital, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Keep in mind that to experience what Penang has to offer, you need to stay here for at least three days. You can get to Penang from Kuala Lumpur by train or bus, but we were in Cameron Highland and the only option we had it was a taxi or a bus and we took a taxi, it was a long journey, five hours drive and we are here. Today we are going to explore Penang and we'll show you the best thing to see and do here. But first thing first, we are going to have breakfast and here they love the coffee art. You can see it's very pretty. In Penang, the food is as diverse as it is delicious. From traditional Malaysian dishes to Western cuisine and everything in between. We talk more about it throughout the video. In Penang, we can use grab, which is great. And we took a grab to here, to Penang Hill from Georgetown. And now we have to take a funicula to go up the Penang Hill. The queue is a bit crazy. I think we arrive at the same time as the school kids. Actually, there was not a lot of people in the queue to buy the ticket. They are mostly just waiting there. Um, and for some reason, only one person at a time can join the ticket queue, so I'm here. So the ticket price was 30 per person to go up and back down. I think there's also a fast lane one, but we are taking the, we just got the normal ticket. I think it's not busy. We are actually at 800 meters altitude and here we can have a great view of Penang Island and the mainland and we can see the bridge yesterday we drove uh, through the bridge is very very long and it connects the island to the mainland If you want to have a better view with the decoration and you have to come here but you have to pay extra 10 ringgit per person to walk here and then they take a photo of you but we ask no we don't need the photo we just uh, we are happy with our camera and with our mobile phone Before getting here, I didn't expect it to be this huge. It's huge with different attractions and different paths to follow. And now we are trying to find the habitat Penang Hill and it should be this way. The habitat Penang Hill is one of the best places to visit in Malaysia. It's actually a natural trail and it's 1.6 kilometers. We have 40 minutes walk here and we just saw a monkey. As 
some point you can just leave the main path and go to other attractions and here is the butterfly bank and there are a lot of butterflies just roaming around freely and as you can see it's outdoor and this is the another attraction just dragon Okay, this is the highest viewpoint in Penang. Can you hear that? It's like, sounds like a weird animal snoring probably it's just some cricket something like that but it's yeah it sounds weird the good thing is like when you walk down here you don't need to go back all the way you can just get the shuttle and go to the entrance it's okay you can sit back okay yeah. Maybe it was a smart day if we bought a fast lane ticket because when we came up there was no queue but going down we waited 40 minutes. So if we had the fast lane, probably we didn't need to wait at all. Just a few minutes drive from Penang Hill, you can actually visit uh, Keklok Sea Temple. Uh, you just need a few minutes ride. I think we might need to take another cable car to go to the top. It looks quite big as a side. There's so many turtles here and actually you can buy vegetable and feed them. And I just saw a baby turtle top of the mummy. Keklok Si Temple is the largest Buddhist temple in Malaysia, expanding across 30 acres. The construction of the temple began in 1890 and was completed in 1905. This temple is more than 100 years old and is a must visit in Penang. This place is huge and there are so many different parts to visit. So if you are coming here, take your time. The design of Cake Lok Si was inspired by different countries like Thailand, China and Myanmar. Same as any other temple, when you want to walk inside, you have to take off your shoes. visit the temple you don't need to pay but if you want to visit the pagoda you have to pay the ticket is not expensive it's just two ringgit per person the seven story pagoda is the main attraction here and it is home to 10,000 statues of buddha Now to go to the statues, we have to take a lift. And for the lift, uh, each ticket is six ringgit, return ticket. Wow, this is massive.
coin in a statue, also known as the Goddess of Mercy, stands at 36.5 meters high, and it is a symbol of compassion and mercy. We have the whole leaf to ourselves. Penang is famous for its unique street art. I'm sure that you've seen the photos on social media. But here now, you can also take a tour to different parts and see all of them. Here is the most popular part of the Georgetown. So people like come with this street art, take photos, and you should just spend some time here. It's, they're very beautiful. Just a short walk from the street art area. You can find the jetty, it's the floating market and it's part of UNESCO World Heritage Site. And, but watch out because there is no pavement, literally you're walking on the street. And there's a scooter just coming fast, just watch out. The Kilan jetties of Penang are historic Chinese villages built out over the water on long jetties. Basically, they were established as Chinese immigrants arrived in Penang seeking for home. Typically, each jetty belongs to a single family. Among them, Chu Jetty is the largest clan jetty and the only one open to the public. It was built in the mid 19th century. Today, Chu Jetty has 75 houses, several Chinese temples, and many tourist facilities all linked by wooden walkways. Since Chiu Jetty has become a popular tourist attraction, some of the houses here sell souvenirs, handcrafted items, and food. a lot of options for food. You can go for street food, you can go for local Malaysian food or fusion or even like western noise or modern food. Like now we are kind of like having pasta with some Malaysian touch. It's actually tiger prawns as you can see it's huge but it's not mixed with my pasta. It tastes very good. In Penang, we are staying in Georgetown, which is the old part and is the UNESCO World Heritage Site. And also, there are many attractions there. Today, we left Georgetown and we got a taxi to Penang National Park. To get to the National Park, you have different options. You can take a bus from uh, Georgetown, or you can get a taxi, or uh, use Grab, the app that works like Uber. So we opted for the Grab. And once you get here, you have different options to get to go around the national park. The main two spots people go to are Turtle Beach and Monkey Beach. And there are two walking paths from the entrance of the park that you can take to go either to Monkey Beach or to Turtle Beach. Right now, the path to Monkey Beach is actually closed because it's damaged. Uh, so you cannot walk there. So you can only walk to Turtle Beach. And then you have the option to also take a boat uh, all the way back so you can take a boat from Turtle Beach to Monkey Beach and then back to the entrance. Otherwise if you don't want to walk at all you can also take the boat directly to Monkey Beach and the Turtle Beach and back directly from the entrance if you already don't want to walk at all under this heat. But we opted for the option to walk to Turtle Beach so we're gonna walk for like a, an hour and a half to get to Turtle Beach. We're gonna explore the area around there and then we already booked the time for our boat to go back to Monkey Beach and then to the entrance at 12.30 so we have a time limit so we should start moving. While we were in Georgetown, we never felt that we are on an island, but here actually we are next to the sea and the sea here is beautiful. We just saw a huge, huge lizard. It looks like a crocodile. I don't know the name, but it was huge and was sunbathing. Hello? 
we have to follow the path to Pentai Karachut and the other path goes to Monkey Beach which is close so this way Quite steep. It's steep. It's hot. It's very hot. Yeah, it was already 30 degrees at 9 a.m. this morning. So, you know what we are used to from the UK. It doesn't work, even the water of the river is hot. We are still on the right track, Pantai Kerachut. Oh, that's a good sign. We haven't seen anyone here. We are the only one in this path and we are hearing some weird noises. The ghost. Oh, okay, there's another sign here, so this way. We're supposed to be at the beach at 11.45 but now it's 11.30 and we have just 500 meters to go. This is supposed to be a lake but it dried out and we are almost here where I can see the beach. Let's go and find the turtles and we should be back here at 12.30 to get the boat. Oh monkey! This is the hatchery part. Uh, turtle apparently lay down the eggs here. he knew that it's not our boat because we have kind of number when we reserved it so yeah probably he said yellow boat something I don't see any yellow boat they are all blue We arrived with a very great welcome by dancing with locals and this beach is Monkey Beach is busier and there are shops and kind of like bar restaurants and you can buy food and drink here 
and it's nice. We have one hour and then we leave. Okay, we are having lunch here and it's like barbecue set up barbecue with rice and I don't know how it works. I mean, is it buffet or we just paid? I don't know. <laughs> but people here are so friendly. Like since we arrived, they're welcoming us, they talk to us and they just made a table for us too. Here it doesn't feel that we are a tourist. It feels like we are part of their family because everyone that works here that come to us and welcome us and talk to us and talk about the food, talk about the culture and it's just like you feel you are part of their family. And they brought us food and it looks great. It's rice and set up a barbecue, fish, chicken, hot dog I guess. And the prawns is getting ready to destroy that one. Mm. Tastes really good. The owner of this restaurant uh, keeps calling Bruno Mr. Handsome. <laughs> he is handsome. There aren't a lot of monkeys around actually, probably because there's a lot of people and I'm not sure how it works, but if you leave the food on the table, definitely some monkeys will come to, to take it. So maybe we're gonna walk away from the people and see if we can see any, or we're just gonna chill out. It doesn't feel very stable, but I will risk it. I think our boat is there and we have to leave this beach and go to the entrance of the national park where we started our journey. Very safe, but this is the way apparently. And I'm walking backwards. So. And Bruno is going to kill himself. No, no, no. We are back at the entrance of the national park, and we just called the grab. On the way back to Georgetown, we are going to stop at the floating mosque since it's on the way. Thank you. This is the floating mosque and when you want to go to the mosque definitely you have to dress up properly and respectfully and but we didn't plan to come here so I'm with shorts but I read that they give us proper clothes so for now we are outside Penang Floating Mosque is unlike any other mosque. It is better to come here at high tide when it looks like the mosque flows on the sea. This beautiful mosque features a mixture of Middle Eastern and local architecture. It can accommodate up to 1,500 worshippers at one time. 